Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to our second webinar series uh, on running field schools during the times of uh, COVID. Of course, this also gives us a, an edge in the issues we have been discussing about digitalization of a formal field school. So I would like to welcome all of you uh, to this webinar. Uh, which is uh, organized by the African Forum for Agricultural Advisory Services, East Africa Field School Hub, the Global Farmer Field School Platform in FAO, the Resilience Food Systems Program, and the Family Farming Knowledge Platform. So uh, we are delighted that you were able to join us. Uh, last time uh, we did a and it was indeed um, clear that we as a field school fraternity we are together unfortunately the, the zoom couldn't accommodate most of us we apologize for that but this uh, second webinar we are now for the second webinar we are present prepared to receive all our colleagues my name is Max Olcott I work for Mon nom est Max Oluko et je travaille pour uh, which is a, a continental organization responsible for extension in Africa. I am also the East Africa Field School uh, support hub coordinator and the field school hub is hosted by AFAS. So we've been doing a lot of work especially in terms of uh, discussions about COVID how to uh, support our master trainers, how to share knowledge during this time of COVID, but also making sure that the extension uh, continues to operate, a field school continues to operate, a, uh, but observing all the government's rules and regulations in terms of uh, COVID-19. So we had a very productive discussion last, uh, last, uh, or last time, but we thought that it would be good to br bring the same discussions again to a wider group of people. With this now, uh, I would like to just uh, alert us that today we have a very vibrant and robust uh, tool. We have First, when, you, when you're given a chance to talk, you put on your video. When you're not talking, please uh, uh, remove your video. Then also when you're talking, you unmute yourself. When you're not talking, please uh, try to mute so that we give ourselves a lot of um, uh, attention to the presenters. Uh, the other important uh, thing I want to bring to attention of the participants is that we have uh, a, a dialogue for chat. So chat is about you introducing yourself, you're telling some people about you. But the most important is that we have a question and answer, Q&A. So the Q&A, we like to make use of it by you sending questions, and I would like to implore the presenters to be very vigilant, to look at those questions where you think you may have to give some feedback. Others, we shall, of course, compile all of them and be able to respond uh, at a later period. But we shall try as much as possible to do the, the response now. So I encourage all the participants to have Q&A. So within this, again, today we are very, very much privileged privilege that we have very competent team to lead us through the discussions. Uh, first of all, we are joined by the director of partnerships and South-South cooperation in, in, at the FAO headquarters, um, director Marcela. So we shall give her a chance to talk. But also we have our season, the uh, Iron Lady, Sophie who is the projects coordinator for farmer field schools at FAO. So uh, those of you who may have been hearing about Sophie, you will see her presenting to us. We have Cassia from uh, Angola. She's the communications officer. We have Thomas Amen from uh, Malawi, a consultant for F uh, farmer field school based at the FAO office. 
Malawi. We have Jam, who is a, a senior person in participatory climate smart agriculture extension from Pakistan. Then we have, we shall have experience from the real field person, master trainer, and a person who has dealt with the farmer field school for long, Baha Nguma, giving experiences from Kenya. So for today, my, my colleague Ori was not able to join, but I'm standing in for him. And our, of course, we've been doing this together, moderating. So you're welcome again. And with this now, may I therefore uh, call upon Director Marcella to give us her opening remarks. Welcome. Good morning. I was uh, just unmuted by the host, so thank you. Good morning. It's a real pleasure to be with you, all of you here this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, I am Marcela Villarreal. I am the Director of Partnerships in FAO, and within the Partnerships Division, we are running the Decade of Family Farming. Um, and all the partnerships with civil society organizations, farmers organizations, and um, um, with a very uh, clear focus on family farming. Now, I've been in FAO more or less 20, almost 24 years. And throughout all my time here in FAO, I have always been fascinated by the farmer field schools. I think that if we were to save, uh, say, the most important initiatives of FAO in all of its history, farmer field schools is definitely one of them. Farmer field schools have been empowering farmers throughout the world, millions and millions of farmers. And lives of these farmers have changed uh, thanks uh, to this very, very empowering participatory experience through the Farmer Field School. So it's really my pleasure uh, to be uh, with you here today. And of course, we all know how important family farmers are to the world. Uh, without family farmers, we would not be eating. Family farmers produce almost 80% of the food we eat in value terms around the world, be they small or large, but mostly small, and with many, many, many challenges. Of course, all of these challenges have been just increased uh, during this time, this unprecedented situation of the of COVID uh, uh, crisis. But family farmers um, face numerous challenges uh, they produce food in very, sometimes very difficult uh, situations, uh, sometimes even below subsistence level. Uh, there's poverty concentrated among uh, family farmers. And therefore, uh, when the UN declared first the International Union Family Farming, it gives us an opportunity to zero in on how we can best address the problems and all of the different challenges that family farmers face, and at the same time, builds on the massive contribution that they make, not only to food and to the food we eat, but also to biodiversity, to sustainability, to the environment, to reduce climate change effects. So family farmers are fantastic contributors, not only to SDG2, which talks about um, family farming, but to all of the different SDGs. They're fundamental for us to be able to reach the goals stipulated in the SDG agenda throughout all the 17 uh, goals. So um, we have uh, mandated by the United Nations, we are implementing the UN Decade of Family Farming as we speak. We started, we launched it uh, more or less exactly a, a year ago. And we have a global action plan with uh, seven pillars. This action plan was constructed uh, with the participation of family farmers throughout the world. So it is a robust uh, and important uh, instrument uh, for us uh, to lead the decade and to ensure that throughout the decade, we will be achieving results for having family farmers achieve their potential. They have a massive potential and they need adequate policies and enabling environments to ensure that they're able to uh, fulfill that potential. Within 
uh, our activities when on family farming, we have the family farming knowledge platform. And if you have not um, visited yet, we ask you to please visit it. You will find basically everything you need about family farming knowledge, experience, policies, data, you'll find it there. So um, we would like all of you to participate in this family farm farming knowledge uh, platform. So I was saying that family farmers face numerous challenges and during uh, in our work, we have been collecting um, region-specific challenges faced by family farmers. Um, but if this were not enough, we find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic that is really making us rethink almost everything we do, including, obviously, how we source our food and where does our food come from and how sustainably it is produced. And also, by producing food, family farmers fulfill also their livelihoods. So at the time of a crisis, we have to rethink not only humans' relationship to the environment, and this is an important part of this crisis, but also very importantly, how we eat our food, how we produce our food, how we ensure that those who produce our food um, are able to have a decent livelihood out of that process which they do sustainably and which they do respecting the environment. So COVID as a pandemic has really unveiled many of the inequalities that are underlying all aspects of our work. If you remember back to the HIV and AIDS, AIDS uh, pandemic uh, 20, almost 20 years ago, um, that was a pandemic that thrived on inequality. But that pandemic was much more about gender inequality than other inequalities, although other inequalities were fundamental, were a fuel to that pandemic. Today, we're seeing that economic inequality, income inequality, rural urban inequality are major drivers of this pandemic and its outcome. And therefore, it is a time for all of us to address the impacts of this epidemic and to ensure that we understand much better the inequalities that are driving it, the inequalities that are produced because of the pandemic, and how are we going to ensure that as societies thinking together, we're able to respond to these inequalities. And I believe that today, um, as uh, the manual is going to be launched in terms of how to address uh, how to do pharma field schools in midst of the COVID pandemic is a fantastic and useful tool for us, not only to continue the pharma field schools, for us to also think about the world of family farming, its contribution, and how it can be continued to be enhanced throughout the decade and afterwards. So it's a pleasure to be with you today, and I thank you for inviting me to open this really, really, really interesting webinar. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Marcela, for those very important, very inspiring remarks, opening remarks to the Field School Fraternity. And indeed, uh, I, I wouldn't even want to add anything that you said, but just to confirm that we are very delighted to be with you. The, the, the lives of those who have who fill our granaries with the fridges, the decent life that they live is the, the purpose that the field school will always strive to do. The empowerment route that we cherish as a field school fraternity is will will remain very critical in the delivery systems to support both the farmer but also other stakeholders. Thank, thank you so much. Now, I have the pleasure now to call upon uh, Sophie, uh, who is the project coordinator for the, field, the Global Field Schools uh, at FAO, to make her presentation. Sophie, in, in East Africa, we say Karibu Sana. 
<laughs> Asantana. Thank you, Max. Um, I think you can see my screen now. Yeah, okay. we can. Okay, great. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Marcella, for these inspiring remarks. And uh, I'm very glad uh, um, that the Global Pharma Fear School platform was able to organize this webinar with our partners. My name is Anne Sophie Poiseau from FAO Rome, from FAO HQ. Um, I'm um, the um, projects coordinator for Pharma Fear Schools in our headquarters. And uh, we're happy that we could uh, organize this webinar to share lots of field experiences of how pharma field schools and other field trainings have helped um, in uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, thanks, to, this is a partnership with the Af African uh, Forum for Agriculture Advisory Services, AFAS, with the UN Decade on Family Farming, the East Africa Field School Hub, uh, the East Africa Office of FAO, and many of the uh, other offices and partners, uh, field offices and partners of the Global FFS platform. Um, Farmer Field Schools, um, uh, here you can see, before I move on, uh, this is a campaign that was run by an NGO called DIG, Development and Gardening in Senegal and how they use some material uh, in connection with uh, vegetable gardens and farm and field schools uh, to, um, to uh, sensitize communities about uh, uh, measures for uh, health uh, protection in COVID-19. So what we've seen as FAO globally in, in, in this pandemic is uh, a very uh, in, uh, per, um, pervasive, although intermittent, intermittent malfunctions in food supply chains. Um, um, with a lot of, of course, movement restrictions, not every country was in lockdown, but uh, a lot of uh, restrictions were um, uh, impl implemented on transport of food products and people. So that impaired um, availability of labor in many places, as well as uh, uh, movements of food products. Uh, there's, there's been changes in location of demand in the sense that many markets were closed. Um, some inputs unavailable, and um, with that, a pervasive um, uh, re um, issues with uh, lo uh, lower incomes uh, and reduction in demand, uh, resulting from reduced uh, purchasing power, uh, shortage in some places of labor, also excessive labor in others. And this has uh, basically uh, generated situations that have increased vulnerability in some countries, in some sectors or groups. And estimates are that number of poor may increase by almost half a billion, and the food insecure, the numbers of the food insecure globally may increase by 183 million. And in this context uh, that we all have to adapt to, farmers were initially looking uh, for information on how to solve specific problems with their animals, with their crops, um, uh, related to reduced access to advisory services and, and, and inputs. But very quickly, the market issue uh, became a, a major concern for farmers. Where to sell? Uh, markets were disrupted. What to sell? How much? how to transport, how to get permits, uh, how to access inputs, etc. So what we've seen is that extension and advisory services and, and farmer field schools, because they have a presence in rural communities, have been helpful in many, many ways. You will hear um, uh, a series of uh, great interventions um, from different field offices or, um, and partners about how they've adjusted their field schools to cope. Basically, field schools and, and advisory services have helped health services raise awareness on COVID-19 and protective measures, but also have helped advocate solutions to farmers' challenges in the midst of policy problems that, that decision makers have to face. Um, and, and a lot of innovation have come up uh, to provide technical advice despite physical distancing. I think uh, digital tools have taken a new space in the life of every one of us. You can see here um, uh, some, some screenshots from uh, WhatsApp groups from master trainers. This is in particular in Burkina, in the Sahel, um, uh, sharing information about uh, COVID precaution measures and how to handle extension activities. And also uh, a picture from, I think, 
three days ago from a, a village credit and savings association in Burkina Faso, uh, where that has worked in conjunction with the farmer field schools and the farmers have been able to maintain significant profits uh, through small income generating activities, producing inputs, producing uh, processing, uh, some food, um, thing, working with the credit system and, and the field schools uh, together. Um, so field schools have been helpful in supporting partnerships to overcome some of these supply chain malfunctions and also they've played an important role in, uh, in inclusion, uh, in, in helping smooth social tensions and, and, and gender uh, imbalances. So some of the key considerations, uh, now that a lot of the countries in the global south have um, are starting a new growing season because rains have come in many places, uh, a, a key point we want to reiterate is that, of course, we have to keep in mind that agriculture trainees can result in spreading the virus, uh, group trainings, but they can also be an opportunity to sensitize people if you follow recommendations carefully. So better be safe than sorry. Um, it's critical as, as a project manager or as a government official uh, or, or as a facilitator of field schools, you we strictly follow guidance from the government and local institutions in carefully deciding whether trainings can take place and what and how. Um, of course, basic precautions if that anyone, be it the trainer or a participant, is showing symptoms or is feeling unwell, he or she should not attend field schools or trainings and call off the training if needed and, and seek local health authority for guidance. Um, um, and, and remind each other that precautions, if trainings do take place, ha precautions have to be um, uh, uh, followed. Simple measures can protect health. I think everybody knows these measures by now, but it's, it's a, a gradual behavior change for all of us to, to, main, to, to adopt measures such as frequent hand washing, but also greetings, safe greetings, and keeping distances. In many countries, the situation is changing and, and the, the initial scare is going away, but it's important to remain very, very vigilant to avoid a backlash and, and to keep uh, precautions measures as much as possible. This is a poster we prepared as the Global FFS platform. Uh, we're happy to provide that to anyone who wants to adapt it, translate it into local language. We can provide the design file in design files uh, free of charge. We have a lot of material we can share with uh, field field colleagues. So how, how to decide how to adjust training activities based on local situation. The guidance we've been uh, given and, and the discussion we've had with countries is that if the country's in lockdown, of course, postpone or FFS and other field training activities. And um, the host farmers in the field schools can help manage the uh, FFS plot or herd. And um, uh, it's important that you can keep in touch with the FFS members and farming communities despite uh, the situation. Digital tools are very, very helpful in that. And it's important uh, to adhere to government re regulations and protective measures at all times. Um, it, many countries have, um, have adopted restrictive measures but have not uh, adopted lockdown. And there are meetings and field activities that are still allowed. Um, Nonetheless, you might want to consider canceling or postponing some FFS sessions. Annually, what are these FFS sessions? Trainings, postponed open day field visits, and you might want to consider reducing FFS participants or the number of, of the participants in your group. Um, you'll hear from some countries uh, where. Um, uh, the groups, the 2025 group number of, of participants in FFS was reduced to four or five lead farmers and each of them would then conduct a mini FFS in another site with another four or five farmers. So they would never be a large group um, at the same time. Um, you can use phones if, if farmers are connected and have smartphones uh, and, and also videos um, to keep sharing the learning that's happening among those farmers that are able to meet. Um, in, in a lot of places, we've seen that the, the farmer facilitators have been able to take over from extension services. Um, in many FFS programs, the number of, of facilitators uh, uh, who are farmers 
far exceeds the, the facilitators who are extension workers or NGO staff. And these farmer facilitators have played a critical role because they're in communities and they've maintained the field plots and they maintain the learning, uh, doing re real time phone calls with, uh, with uh, other group members who couldn't attend the, that field school session, etc. Every session train, training session should, of course, strictly implement uh, basic protective measures and, and can be um, helpful and very important to raise community awareness about protection measures. Uh, we will see some examples of activities you can do in field trainings uh, to, to uh, facilitate awareness of precaution measures. Uh, as well as maintaining livelihoods. So in, even in countries that have little, no restrictions, it's important to remain very, very vigilant at the stage and keep implementing protective measures in every training and, um, and use field schools to raise awareness on, on, on hygiene. So we have lots of resources at the Global FFS platform. We've produced them uh, with amazing uh, contributions from many, many partners in the field and many FAO offices. The, the numbers of languages keeps growing. So visit the Global FFS platform um, and we're happy to provide these files free of charge for translation adaptation to your local context. So don't hesitate to send us a message. So some of the activities you can do in the field schools. So that can include, of course, discussions on basic protective measures, um, how to protect yourself and others, because we have to remember that we can be carrying the virus and not have any symptoms. So if you don't feel that you're sick, you, you still want to protect others in case you might be carrying it un unknowingly. Um, uh, there's a lot of role plays that can be done in field schools to, uh, to help the behavior change, gradual behavior change. You can also, um, uh, we have prepared activities in this handbook that I just showed, the blue handbook, on preparing soap, preparing sanitizer at home, if these are not available in local communities, um, and doing uh, creative icebreakers, etc using masks, what to do uh, in the community if you find uh, someone may have uh, COVID-19, uh, how to explore local and indigenous knowledge around the responses, and etc. So you'll find all of these resources on, on the handbook on running FFS in times of COVID-19. My, co my colleague Zoe and Susan, who've been um, amazing at, at at helping me put this material together with all of our colleagues, uh, we'll be putting the links on the chat so you can access all these materials and posters. So one of the things you can do uh, is, uh, as, a, as a field trainer is, for instance, demonstrating how viruses spread. So you, you just take a plate of flour and pretend to sneeze. Of course, you don't want to really sneeze because you might yourself spread the virus in case, but you fan the flower through the air to sort of mimic what happens with the small droplets of virus who may spread when you sneeze or your cough or your spit. And, and you spread this flower around and then ask participants to, to observe where did the flower land? It's on your hands, it's on your clothes, it's on your objects. And then if, if, if somebody sneezes and it's contaminated, this is how the virus might spread. So you use this sort of uh, exercises to visualize uh, how the virus might spread. You could also do a lot of role plays to mimic good behavior and possibly bad behavior. When you're going shopping, you're going to prayer, you're conducting your ISA. Of course, agroecosystem analysis is a core element of field schools, but in this period, it's, it's important to keep uh, safe and conduct ISA at a distance from each other. What, uh, farmers typically huddle together to observe a plant, but make sure to respect minimum one, two meters distance. When you do that, and, um, and um, other participants can observe during these role plays uh, what, what, what measures were followed and if anything can be improved. Of course, icebreakers and group dynamics and physical games are a, an essential part of any former field schools and, and other field trainings. Um, and, and they often involve physical contact uh, 
uh, the, the, the purpose of these icebreakers are to help participate, uh, create a, a, a positive group dynamic and also to communicate important ideas about cooperation, about learning from each other and about technical topics. But remember not to use any icebreakers or group dynamics that you're used to as a facilitators, but that involves physical contact. So we have to be creative, inventing icebreakers um, where we keep distances, the best song about, or the best dance about best about protecting measures or how to invent creative greetings. You can have lots of fun creating icebreakers uh, around precaution measures and, and, and the situation. We also give guidance in the handbook uh, on how to make a tippy tap in the field schools, but also in the village for hand washing station uh, using local material. So all the guidance and videos are there on how to do that, how to make masks in the field schools. So I should say that all of this guidance is based on WHO material um, as much as possible. So um, uh, using local material, uh, hand masks, uh, face masks, sorry, uh, homemade masks have proven to be, uh, there's a gradual body of evidence that shows that it's, it's quite effective in, in preventing further spread. So, Discussing gender-related impacts of COVID-19, it can be very important in local communities. Um, from the Ebola um, um, uh, pen, um, outbreaks and from this pandemic, it, it is clear that um, uh, public, such public health emergency uh, hit women and, and vulnerable people stronger. Um, when there are food security crises, women are often the first one to eat less and to eat last. Uh, but we've also seen a worrying increase in many, many countries around the world, in the north and the south, of gender-based violence during the pandemic, especially during lockdown, where people don't have their usual coping mechanism and don't even have an escape outside the home. So this has been a major challenge. And as a facilitator, you might want, if, if you sense issues um, in the community, you might want to bring in specialized people, uh, health workers, or NGOs, but you might have a table a simple discussion on how COVID-19 has impacted the tasks of men and women or young and old differently. And especially how to take care of the elders who are often exposed as, as um, leaders in the community to many public meetings, but who need to be protected. ICTs is of course a very important uh, tool that has helped billions of people literally cope with this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so in former field schools, uh, many groups have been created in WhatsApp, WeChat, uh, instant messaging, uh, but also partnerships with Dimitra clubs and rural radios and digital um, um, participatory video platforms. They are critical and, and more and more we need to uh, include ICTs in, in extension services. But very interestingly, former field schools have helped and continue helping protecting rural livelihoods during this pandemic. They can be um, help, particularly helpful um, to um, uh, pr support uh, input production, seed production, when farmers have the technical skills, but also pr production of local pest botanical insecticides, biopesticides, biostimulants, as we are doing in our former field schools in India on agroecology. Um, but also Health of S can help um, uh, create uh, the platforms for sharing information on market locations and prices, uh, labor demands in various places. There are many organized groups of through WhatsApp and, and other tools uh, that former field schools um, facilitators have uh, or communities. So they, are very, they have proven very, very helpful also to link with community savings and loans and insurance schemes and social protection. So, uh, in, in conclusion, COVID-19 uh, may be a sort of turning point or a, a new phase in our realization uh, and the deepening of this scenario of digitalization. Uh, it has evolved even faster. Will advisory services evolve fast enough or will they be left behind? Um, this digitalization uh, has a lot of promise and has been amazing in, in many places and continuing connections with farmers and between farmers, but they require new skill sets and often advisory services are not equipped 
from how those farmers also do not necessarily have access to smartphones. There's a digital divide that is also growing with women, with the elderly, and um, and uh, we need. Um, empowerment of farmers, empowerment and empowerment. And we need to keep that in mind as we move forward. And as FAO, it is our commitment to continue helping bridge this digital divide in agriculture. And no single institution can do this. So we need partnerships and we need blended approaches to learning. Um, and more than ever, we see that the role of extension is to facilitate interactions rather than only disseminated good practices, but it is to facilitate interactions interactions and FFS have always been at the forefront of helping farmers innovate locally and create local solutions for local problems and, and uh, FFS play a huge role in helping farmers innovate. Um, youth and migrant workers are often more exposed to technologies and, and they, uh, they play a critical role in, in, this, uh, in this dissemination of ICTs. Um, so at the Global FFS platform, we started some time back in, in, in taking stock and supporting the field schools team in the field on making an increased use of ICTs. Although you might think that ICT is on one end of the spectrums and FFS are, are being very participatory and field-based are on the other end, actually there's a lot of work that is being done in field schools to be, make, make better use of, uh, of ICTs. Uh, in last December with our partners of the Global FFS platform, we had um, a great uh, workshop uh, on developing a strategy to um, uh, use, make better use of ICTs in field schools, um, using um, helping connect FFS members. ICTs can help maintain these connections as we discussed and we'll see in the next presentation, but also having partnerships with participatory video, which we have right now. We are launching a new partnership with TikTok, for instance, but we've been working with our partners also Access Agriculture, Digital Green, uh, in making more videos available in local communities and helping communities produce their own videos. Actually, our guide uh, handbook has uh, also guidance on how to make nice quality videos with uh, your own phone. So uh, we are also working now with AFAS on developing an e-learning course on FFS. This is targeted primarily for now policymakers and managers and formulators of field schools program on maintaining quality and building FFS programs. Um, we are also working on digitalizing the monitoring and evaluation of field schools. And uh, we will be uh, uh, developing uh, trainings for master trainers on making better use of, of ICTs uh, in field schools uh, programs. So thank you very much. Um, uh, the Global FFS platform is here to serve the FFS community. Uh, we are uh, a partnership practice based uh, with a secretary in, in FEO, but with multiple partners. All of this material is available. Feel free to reach out if you want to translate it or adapt it, and we are happy to, uh, to provide that. Um, thanks to all the partners in this webinar, and I really look forward to hearing all the fascinating field experience uh, that our colleagues will present now. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you so much, Sophie, for that fantastic uh, presentation. And most importantly, also the leadership that the global platform, the global field school uh, platform is giving us the materials, the championship in terms of digitalization. Of course, that is where all of us are moving as the role of extension is widening, the role of extension is becoming a challenging uh, profession. So basically we have to keep adapting. We have to get into the ingredients of how we serve our smallholder farmers, the family farmers better. So with this now, I want to again remind participants, we have uh, the Q&A. Um, you can always uh, ask questions. I also want to request the presenters that you uh, you can always visit and respond to some questions straight away, so that as we continue with the discussions, we also respond to the questions. So I would like now to switch uh, to the real practical experience again, which is coming now um, from uh, our own uh, Cassia, who is going to 
talk about experience from Angola, but also African experience in a way. So, Tatia, welcome. Hello, good morning. Greetings from Luanda, Angola. Uh, my name is Katia Marineiro. I'm, I'm a communication officer here at uh, AFAO Angola. And I'm happy to share with you uh, our experience um, running um, a communications campaign uh, aimed on, the, on, on farmers. Um, and how we managed to launch it uh, just uh, at the beginning of the pandemic here in, uh, in the country. Uh, so the, the idea um, starts just uh, from the Ministry of Agriculture through the Institute of Agrarian Development when they ask uh, FAO uh, to help to reach uh, the farmers in, in Angola, in, uh, including in the remote areas, to inform about the new coronavirus. Uh, it was just in the beginning when the, the Europe um, started to, to lock down and and uh, the plan was to use and engage our farm and field school network here in Angola and to, to reach them with information because the, the, the government was worried because maybe the, the, the farmers was, were not getting the information and have a, not a clue of, of what was the, 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 the disease. Uh, so, and our first target was to reach one million of families. So, we, we know that we should be quick um, and we face uh, two big uh, challenges. Uh, one was to, to think of out of the box because we, we were told that um, uh, maybe the, the new coronavirus could spread on surface like paper, so we should avoid to produce flyers and to give the flyers um, to the, the, the farmers, to people. And the other big challenge was everything was locking down, that it was locked down, and how to make material reach all the provinces faster. Uh, 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 thinking that we were developing the, the information campaign and the, the materials here in the, the capital in, in Luanda. How could we do that? So we, we came with a, with a, with a very um, simple and, um, strategy. The first was to develop one page communication poster with, very, uh, with short and visual mes message. The main idea was that the FAO coordinators in the provinces could, uh, could easily print it on the officer's printers. So this material could be printed on the provinces. We send it by email. And, uh, and also we, we think of, of this material to be printed in the, um, and in the um, black and white as well. Um, and we... we um, we um, developed two main messages. So the poster was divided in two areas, uh, two, two big areas. One, what, uh, the first was what is the, the new coronavirus, the symptoms and the transmission, and how can we prevent it uh, to, to transmit it? Always focusing in the, in the, in the farmers and, and in the, the, the farmer field school context. Also, we work together with the WHO country office to align the messages with them. And one of, of the, 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 the things that our colleagues in the province told us that was, that was a success was that we decided to translate it in the 10 local languages. So it was very easy to, the, to our staff and to, to, to the, the master trainers to communicate in the, in the local language with the, with the farmers. Now you see that the, this poster is available uh, in the Global Farmer Field Schools platform in, uh, in, in many languages and then also in an open source that you can translate it in the, in, uh, the language that, that you, you want. And then 
we also uh, develop a, a strategy to um, to disseminate the information um, the, uh, and it was to train uh, to the, the the FAO province coordinators uh, organize a training uh, to master trainers and to the Institute of Agrarian Development staff um, and the strategy was to first train the master trainers that then we would train the facilitators and then the, all, all the, the farmer field schools during farmer schools field, uh, school sessions and we also developed this one page uh, guidance to them um, telling uh, exactly that you should use a flip chart not to give the information because of the virus can 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 be spread on paper also if you organize a farmer field school session you should uh, keep in mind that you should have this uh, social distance and uh, try to avoid uh, small rooms and and also to use to use the mask so and along and to uh, finally to uh, to 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 complement the, this trainer in some provinces, the, the, our FIO Farmer Field Schools Coordinator also uh, organize a related trainer on to how to do handmade soap. Um, and uh, that's my, my, my quick brief on how we, we, we ran it in, uh, in Angola. I will happy to to answer your questions, um, some specific questions and challenges that we had in the in the field. Thank you. Thank you, Asia, for that very wonderful experience from Angola. As you as participants, you can see. This actually starts to really answer some of the questions. How have we adjusted from the field school fraternity? You could see the distancing, uh, making sure that well, this, this ties together with this, what Sophie was talking about in terms of making smaller groups or avoid, you know, trying to make sure that we have as limited contact as much as possible. So thank you for is a very important experience uh, which will uh, build on the, the way uh, the field school can continue to operate during the, uh, this uh, time of COVID-19. But definitely, of course, even after, there are a lot of lessons and a lot of these materials that we can continue to use uh, for uh, in delivering the field schools. So now, I would like again to encourage you to have the questions coming, but I would like to again switch now to Malawi. You see Malawi just finished voting recently, so uh, they are fresh. And actually voting during time of COVID is also an experience that is good because you really have to observe a lot of SOPs. So may I call upon now Thomas, I mean to, to come on board to give the experience from Malawi. Thomas. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Max. And uh, good uh, morning and afternoon to all the participants. Well, uh, like you already said, uh, I'm Thomas uh, from uh, FAO Malawi. I will also in very few slides uh, be sharing with you uh, some experience on how we have continued to engage um, and run the farm field school activities within the within the country. Well, just to give you some quick outlook on uh, our FFS uh, programming in the country, yeah, the methodology has now been fully recognized within the National Agriculture Investment Plan, which is a policy implementation framework under the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Food Security. And uh, currently, we have up to 45 million USD program portfolio with uh, support from European Union, Government of Flanders, DFID, and uh, GEF. And the methodology is fully anchored within the Department of Agriculture Extension Services, but we also do collaborate with um, 
uh, CG centers and other NGOs. And uh, we have implementation activities in 70, 17 districts out of the 28. That is almost over 60% of the districts uh, in, in Malawi. We have uh, four master trainer centers, and we also have over six uh, international FFS experts who have been engaged for a period of three years. And this worked with uh, a network of over 400 master trainers, 5,000 community-based facilitators, and uh, 6,000 uh, community outreach FFS groups. So that map, you can see uh, some of the spatial distribution uh, of of the farm fiscal activities within the country. Just to give you a, a quick uh, outlook uh, scenarios on COVID-19. Well, we had um, the government uh, declaring the state of disaster in March. And uh, as of today, you can see our case, the number of cases in the country on that, uh, on, on that statistics. But generally, upon the declaration of the disaster, uh, there were prevention guidelines that were issued by government that prevent public gatherings, and that's also affected uh, the farm fiscal implementation. So as a result, we had to close down four master trainers course venues as per late March. But uh, the community-based facilitators training and uh, the farm field school outreach group session continued to operate while adjusting to the existing uh, COVID guidelines. And to support this uh, continuity, we had to then uh, encourage uh, what we call COVID smart session, a session that are run uh, with observation to the preventive guidelines. And then we had to uh, activate and uh, promote uh, robust uh, remote support via mainly social media, to master trainers and community-based facilitators. But also uh, the Farm Field School Resource Handbook on COVID-19, which Annie Sophie presented uh, a lot of information about earlier on, was also very useful as it highlights a lot of preventive measures that was useful in creating awareness, but also to make adjustment in the implementation of some activities at the group level and also at the CBF training level. Now, some of the innovative uh, adjustments that uh, we made uh, were through uh, learning through host groups where the members in, 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 the, in, in, in the FFS uh, split up into small numbers while engaged into short, short, I mean, critical activities such as uh, the IESA, rural field management, uh, village savings and loan and other uh, FFS learning session. So the split of the number is to make the number in, at any event smaller, but also to ensure that the social distancing uh, is also uh, respected including the hand washing facilities. Uh, we also have introduced the virtual support for backstopping the master trainers and community-based facilitators. And this was being done uh, through a network of over 160 tablets that had previously been given to the support the digital FFS m and &E system that we have within the country. So through these tablets, we are able to make communication, and then uh, deploy some useful information through them, upon which the MTs can then uh, share with the community-based uh, facilitators uh, quickly. And then the peer learning and social support. Of course, now since the number of uh, learners at any event has been reduced, so the continuity in terms of sharing information continues through peer-to-peer -peer learning system. And then uh, we had engagement with uh, Access Agriculture and uh, obtained uh, over hundreds of uh, training videos and currently, they are being translated into local languages. And we think once they are translated into local languages, these training videos, once shared, can be accessible off the network so that it can enhance learning uh, at, um, at, 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 at the FFS and the CBF level. And lastly, uh, we also had engagement with community radios, but also to enhance the dissemination of peer agriculture farming uh, messages uh, within the communities that we work with. And then to just give you a, snap, a, a quick snapshot on some of the mechanism in which we have been able to achieve those innovations. Like I mentioned earlier, we had to close down the farmer field school master trainers venue. But at the time we, had, we were closing down, we had already established um, uh, studies and these studies, we needed to keep monitoring so that uh, 
we can communicate results with the master trainers who had already been uh, who are already within their communities. So we deployed uh, between two to three in each of the centers who are supporting with the field observation data collection. And any observations that are made, we usually share it with all the participants in each of the training centers through WhatsApp groups, discussions are, are carried out, and then uh, an agreement reached, and then action are, are taken within the, um, at the RTC, but usually discussions are held on WhatsApp groups. Then also provide remote support, and this is done mainly through WhatsApp groups, like I mentioned, sometimes SMSs, voice calls, depending on which platform is useful depending on the nature of the network in particular locations. We also hold um, some, provide uh, some discussions, meetings, and even training with the master trainers, uh, mainly over Zoom and Microsoft Teams. So depending on the subject, uh, like for instance, uh, recently we had, because we had some studies that were doing on follow management, so there was some support training that we had to do, but uh, we successfully did it over Zoom with the master trainers, and then later on they would engage with the, the participant of the FFS or the community based facilitator. In some circumstances, uh, we also develop uh, posters, recorded videos, audio, which are remotely also uh, shared with MTs. This is to enhance the quick uh, information dissemination. But uh, other hard copies of the posters are also printed, provided uh, to, to, to community based facilitators to facilitate uh, discussion at the FFS level, but the numbers uh, should uh, be provided sufficiently to avoid, uh, you know, sharing among the different learners. And then in some circumstances, we have had master trainers and community-based facilitators directly supporting critical FFS session, of course, while uh, observing all the critical uh, prevention uh, guidelines for COVID-19. And to promote uh, the, the, the preventive uh, guidelines, we have to make provision for personal protective equipment to extension workers, but also sanitary materials to all the FFS learning uh, centers, like hand washing facilities, mainly so that at least participants are able to wash their hands before and after any session. But also, there are some sessions that they really need to like wash their hands when they go for a yes, they need to wash their hands again because sometimes you involve, you know, one person maybe who's making field observations, so to limit any contamination. And then lastly, some of the, just to share with you some of the lessons that we have learned. Indeed, we noted that the ICT platforms uh, is very exciting learning tools for, 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 for farmers, but also the master trainers and the community uh, based facilitators, at least for those that we have had the opportunity to interact with over this uh, platform. Of course, in some location where network connectivity is a problem, it's also limit its utilization. We have also noted that the use of illustrated posters have enhanced uh, session delivery by community-based facilitators. And currently, we are developing quite a number of learning posters, which are, of course, in line with what has been stipulated in the resource handbook. And we hope that once this is finalized, it should be available uh, with sharing with colleagues, uh, mainly through the usual D group that we have, the FFS platform. But also uh, new opportunities emerge, like the engagement I mentioned earlier with community radios to disseminate information, but also with other partners that are experts in developing IEC materials like access agriculture. These are all opportunities that are worth exploring to enhance uh, making the learning materials available to support any FFS activities. And the peer-to-peer -peer information exchange, uh, of course, it facilitates building cohesion and also accelerate learning and provide social support among members to cope with any possible stress that could have been caused by uh, the COVID pandemic. And then lastly, indeed, uh, this has been an experience which enable us to think outside the box. And we noted that uh, it is actually possible to continue to run farmer field schools while making certain adjustments, even in times of uncertainties like what is caused by COVID-19. Yeah, I thank you all and uh, over to you, moderator. We'll be waiting for any comments that will come in from the, the, the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, very exciting, valid experience. And uh, we are happy that we can hear from colleagues what's happening in different regions, different countries. 
on how we can still continue to operate uh, with the field schools uh, despite the, the challenge of COVID. I'm also happy to hear about the, the ICT tools keep on coming very strongly. The farmers embracing this, and this is the way to go for also the extension and delivery of, um, uh, of services to different uh, farmers. But also important to me to is the domestication already of the handbook. We really need to take the handbook really and put it in practice. That is very important. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas. Now, um, I would like to now switch to our colleagues, the champions, the, the, the region where we embraced the field schools first and came to Africa and other regions. So that is now none, none other than Jam Mohamed Khalid from Pakistan. So, Jam, the floor hello. is yours. Yeah, hello, Max. How are you, sir? Uh, videos of, uh, I think you allowed the video. Hello? Max, you listen to me? We hear you, Jem. Okay. Great to have you. You see my presentation? Is there? Yes, we do. We do. Okay. You can put it in slide mode and please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, share in a brief with the experiences and uh, ideas from Pakistan. As many of our senior colleagues, they shared the basic, uh, you know, the challenges and their solutions, especially during the COVID-19 and uh, especially uh, running the farm to school. Uh, in a brief, uh, you know, uh, many challenges, they will be the same. But uh, in a brief, if we said uh, in Pakistan, we, uh, we faced the lockdown situation. Uh, Sometime uh, we had a complete lockdown, and then uh, now we are following the smart lockdown. There's a, and uh, the other uh, challenge for, especially for field school activity, the SOP is uh, issued by the government and the in our organization and the FAO. And especially the most important is the social distancing and wearing masks and a hand wash like this. And uh, uh, the third challenge uh, uh, which we faced that uh, there were two types of farm fish. One was the, that was already in, uh, uh, running during the COVID, COVID period and the other schools which we were uh, to establish uh, during and even uh, now we are, we are going to establish a new, new field school. And the most important, the big growth. Uh, you know, in the farm fish school, we have uh, more than 25, around 25 uh, members. And this is a big group, especially during uh, when we have some SOPs and this uh, limitation uh, under the COVID situation. So addressing these uh, challenges, uh, we find uh, different uh, options and different ideas and experiences, solutions. Uh, the first was, uh, that is the guide, which is developed by the Home Office, uh, handbook for uh, FFS uh, during COVID uh, situation. And also the strategy we recommended uh, uh, dealing with the big group and making a smart FFS that is also included in this uh, handbook. And the second option, uh, the opportunity we had that is the innovation we already uh, exper ex experimented and uh, uh, you know uh, worked on uh, before the COVID situation, but uh, we find it more uh, effective during the uh, COVID situation. Uh, as especially addressing the issue of uh, enabling distancing. I will discuss in detail uh, later. And uh, the third, uh, the use of uh, media, digital media, as uh, my colleague, they have mentioned it, it is very effective and uh, at different levels, especially for the farmers, the facilitators, the manager, and uh, the master trainers. So we'll discuss you the Pakistani experience, how we uh, use them and how we found, uh, found them the, uh, effective. Going to the first one, that is the, uh, we basically introduced the smart FFS. That is, uh, they reduces the bigger group into a smaller one. And uh, the idea was that we cannot, uh, we will not be able until unless we have a lockdown, a lockdown or the COVID uh, situation there. 
so we cannot handle this big group so we divided uh, uh, the big group into five groups they are normally in fertility school experience uh, and we selected the leader of these subgroups and trained them uh, through the facilitator in, a, in the first step and later uh, these uh, leaders uh, the former leaders uh, they, uh, they pass on these learnings to their uh, fellow farmers in their village on the same day or on the next day so this was the first idea and uh, the strategy we developed and we even presented to the Rome office and the, uh, Suzanne as we were also incorporated in the uh, handbook as well. Uh, and you can see uh, uh, it is very effective because uh, uh, if, if we uh, engage the 25 people, definitely we will not be able to follow these uh, SOPs. And uh, if we talk about the second option, uh, we find attractive here in Pakistan that the four colors uh, farmers education and uh, the idea uh, first of all i would uh, like to explain it uh, what it is basically to understand it and how it is effective especially in maintaining the distancing and the uh, during the covid and even before the covid situation uh, this is uh, basically a four color uh, scheme uh, uh, in place of the textual and numerical uh, component to the normally used in farm to school uh, training methods. And the, uh, the theme was that uh, these colors basically they translate the effects into colors. And then these colors will, uh, you know, enable the farmers to make the informed decision. Uh, luckily, this innovation we presented uh, at different forums and we got selected among the top uh, innovations uh, in the agriculture and food system. Uh, of FAO uh, Saudi Arabia. How it works, uh, what it is basically. Uh, there are four colors and four co uh, all, uh, this is green, yellow, red, and blue. Both all colors have uh, defined, predefined meanings, which are, uh, which I have uh, believe, we believe that these are very universal meanings like. Uh, Ils ont des sens universels, que ces couleurs ont des sens universels. Um, uh, sont, uh, especially during the analytical process. Uh, the meanings, uh, if I say the, like a green, uh, green color, it has a positive or a progress uh, sign. And when we find something that is increasing or decreasing in a positive way in crop or in any, uh, you know, whatever the commodity or the crop we selected for each school. So if this sign is there, then uh, we mean that uh, something is in a green, green way. And the normal is no increase, no decrease. And alarming is something decrease or increase in a uh, negative way. And the blue one is for maturity, that uh, things are maturing and completing. So we, um, uh, these are only four colors. How we use them and where we use them. You know, uh, in farmer field school, uh, there is a uh, agro ecosystem analysis methodology or a tool, which is uh, the, uh, prime tool for the farm of school activity. If it is missing in the farm of school, uh, then we cannot say that uh, the, that's the farm of school. So uh, keeping in mind the importance of this uh, idea that uh, how agro-ecosystem analysis is done in the field school. You know, the all farmer, farmers sitting in the field school, they need to learn through this process and they, they need to observe the crops and its ecosystem components, they, they need to record them, they need to analyze them, and they need to uh, make decision out of these uh, observations and their data analysis. And during this process, they observe many things, many parameters they found uh, in the field about the crops, about the uh, environment, about the surroundings of, uh, of the crops. So this is very complicated, but Palm Tree School has made it very easy. And, uh, you know, as a dynamic process, there are several learnings all the time. We've been improving this process. And this time we uh, made a different, uh, uh, take it as a different way. Uh, you know, when we uh, do this agro-ecosystem analysis activity, normally the farmers sit in a group and uh, they translate their observation into uh, the analysis uh, on the flip chart and then make the decisions like this you can see in the picture and here's the uh, you know the need of that people did need to sit together and this is the problem uh, this we find problem this 
during the COVID situation that people cannot sit together. And that's why the major activity, the core activity of the daily school that was badly uh, affected uh, uh, due to COVID situation. So we find a solution uh, now. Because this innovation, we already developed that before the COVID situation, uh, especially for the illiterate people, that uh, how the illiterate people can treat uh, the uh, this textual and numerical education method because they cannot read and write and they cannot even understand. So they find uh, from every time the problem in presenting and sitting in the in the, in the school. So we made these visual boards instead of creating every week these uh, uh, flip charts. Uh, we we moved to a flip bo uh, visual boards which has the uh, you know all every parameter in a visual way and in local language. So people, those who are literate, they can write, read, and those who are, who are not uh, not literate, they can go and see uh, through the pictures. And all the parameters, even more than 50% new parameters that we normally miss during the ISA system in the, in the routine field school activity, they are included in this uh, new improved, uh, visual boards. How it works? You know, here farmers normally they use these color stickers, these four colors, and every parameter when uh, they observe in the field, whatever they observe, and uh, how they have analyzed that situation through their experience, using their experience, the, the discussion with all farmers and even the facilitator. So they finally they uh, made some uh, final analysis that uh, this parameter has this stage, uh, like it is alarming, or it is improving, or it is in a normal way. So they just put the stickers and uh, make, uh, make this analysis. They also do the drawings as well, so for learning, uh, enhancing this learning. So these boards we we, we are using here in Pakistan. We develop these boards uh, for different uh, uh, crops as well. You see uh, in this picture, if you see uh, these all farmers, they are illiterate, but they are reading it, they are presenting it, and they are making it. So we find it very convenient for everyone, even for literate. You know, colors have same meanings for children, for uh, uh, youngs, for elders, for literate, for illiterate. Colors have same meaning. So it is a very common language for everyone to create a, a equality and equity in the, in the process. Uh, and we found it, you know, uh, and uh, other thing is that when they use colors, they basically stimulate uh, the discussion. And uh, that is what we need in, during the uh, learning process that people, they should discuss. More discussion mean more learnings. Uh, if you go, if you see now how it is working in the COVID situation, because these boards have very uh, uh, clear, uh, you know, visual, visual uh, in it, and they can be seen from a distance even. And even these boards can be used in directly in the field. Farmer can take it in the field. And farmers, once they observe their crops and fields, uh, the data, and then uh, they express their learning uh, analysis, then they, they directly they can just paste the colors. If somebody is literate, then they can even write some key points as well. It has option in it. So that uh, this is uh, working very good if, uh, in Pakistan because we already had it. And during the COVID, we, we don't find any problem, uh, especially dealing with this uh, distancing issue. Uh, if, I want, if I share with you that we have developed uh, these type of uh, boards for uh, almost nine different uh, learning packages uh, for one cotton and rice, sunflower, even one for all crop as well. We, we, we have already developed this uh, visual board for it. We developed for horticulture crops as well because they have different mode of production and cycle. Uh, we made it for livestock, which is very interactive and very good, especially uh, uh, giving a good learning way to the uh, farming community. We also have developed for homestead gardening, which we named as a zero hunger visual board, which has uh, which is ex excellent and we're using in women open school, uh, especially made for the food security purpose. Uh, we are developing uh, from uh, this board for former business school, uh, for business purpose as well. How we, uh, we 
give the business education to farmers, pet food, which were illiterate farmers. And, uh, you know, in Pakistan, the majority of farmers, they are illiterate. More than uh, 60 to 70 percent, they belong to illiterate community. And we also have developed a climate smart village visual board as well. Uh, so these nine boards are available and we have shared some of them, we have shared with the home office as well. Uh, regarding this innovation, we develop a toolkit uh, which, will, uh, which is in English and uh, as well as in our national language. Two manuals, uh, how to use these colors and, and different ecosystems. So first manual is for cotton, uh, eco cotton cropping system and the second one is the food security and the uh, homestead gardening. So these are already uh, uh, ready for uh, you know dissemination, but we are also working for other uh, aspects as well for livestock, or for horticulture, and for business too. We are developing these manuals, and the teams are working on it. We also have developed data books as uh, the color-based data books. Initially, we used uh, data books which we have used Dex and Numerics, but now we have data books where we use color stickers, small color stickers instead of writing. So now farmers, illiterate farmers, they are using these data books. So these data books uh, uh, for livestock, for crops, and for homestead gardening uh, are available with us. Uh, the third, uh, uh, you know, the experience and the idea we have we use here in Pakistan as well, like the other countries are recommending that the social channels and the digital media, uh, yes, uh, we are also getting benefit from these, uh, uh, you know, the digital channels. We, use, we are using WhatsApp, Skype, Zoom, and the other one, the ODK, and we develop, uh, you know, a different uh, MNE system. Uh, if, if I uh, if I say uh, what we uh, we have experienced during this COVID, especially using this zooming and other things, we organize a workshop, four-day farmer business school workshop for facilitator. That uh, uh, if we if we were able if we were organizing it without uh, this, using this digital media, that would cost more, you know, a lot, but zero cost, we organize four days at BS workshop here in Pakistan. Uh, we organized a workshop on climate smart villages as well. So these, uh, you know, the ICT tools, they're working very good, very effective and very uh, user friendly as well. Uh, WhatsApp remained very effective, especially when we were, use, uh, we were having school before the COVID, but after the COVID, we, the facilitator was not able to go to school, uh, to run this from of the school. But, uh, they connected with the leadership leader of the Fuelis school, and then these color boards uh, they remain, uh, uh, you know, friendly with the uh, former leader and uses them uh, for the continuity, and they maintain the continuity of the former Fuelis school, even uh, in the absence of uh, facilitators as well. We also have a EFFS uh, application um, we developed uh, in 2018. And now we have an improved version. Uh, we are using it for across the country. And uh, this has a you know dashboard as well. This has uh, offline and online uh, option in it. And it, uh, there's no connectivity. A facilitator can use it without internet. And once it has internet, they can upload the data. It is also GPS focused. It is very effective we using uh, uses it in Pakistan. Uh, during uh, February uh, 2020, the, our uh, director generally visited Pakistan and especially visited our field school activity. And uh, he, uh, he uh, thoroughly you know, examined the color uh, visual boards as well. And he was very uh, excited and he recommended us that, that we should develop, convert this visual board into a mobile application as well, because now it is very easy you can translate this board into an application. So we have initiated this process upon his recommendation and our the senior management. Uh, we already had a, an appli another application that we named it with the global FF, FFS Global with the support of a farmer organization. But now we are going to convert that whole, uh, all of these experiences, the EFFS experiences into one EFFS ecosystem. So that we should have some, you know, a comprehensive uh, online mechanism for field school. Uh, that that should help the facilitators, the managers, as well as the farmers. Uh, initially, we were we were having the system online system that only scored the facilitators and the managers. 
So first we have EFFS, ME, and technical support that is already working in on the ground, uh, and also the uh, global FFS global application. Now, upon the recommendation of the Director General and our FOR and other senior colleagues, uh, we are going to develop EISA, which is seems very difficult or very technical, but uh, our innovation, uh, the four color that enable us to translate this now into an application. So EISA basically that will enable farmers even, even the farmers those who are participating in field school, or even it will be very user friendly for those who are not uh, graduating from the field school or not non FFS farmers. So we aim that, uh, uh, we believe that in, in coming few day, uh, few months, you know, one or two months, we will be able to have this application because we already initiated this uh, development process. And we, aim, we, we are aiming at uh, developing a web-based uh, dashboard that uh, for form of this EFFS ecosystem. And that should be linked with the FFS Knowledge Bank, uh, creating, uh, uh, compiling, and pulling all the knowledge developed uh, around the globe uh, in one place in this uh, web-based uh, and at Android OS and I, uh, Android system. So that uh, facilitator, practitioner, FFS practitioner around the world, they can access it in one place. And we are also embedding uh, social networking in this ecosystem. Uh, where we, we, uh, we are expecting chat box. We already tested this, uh, the prototype it is working. No, but we are going to improve it by just like WhatsApp, just like uh, Facebook. So chat box will be there. And we are also aiming at developing a form of school practitioner profile book. Whoever is engaged in the form of school system across the, in any country, uh, we should have its profile. We should have its visibility in one system. So I believe that uh, this initiative uh, uh, will be uh, a great achievement if we complete it in the coming few months and will be benefiting everyone uh, not even in Pakistan, but other countries as well. Uh, if I conclude this whole presentation, uh, we have some uh, few points to, to, uh, to share with our teams as well as the other one, that uh, we are going to adopt this guide, which, we, which is developed for COVID-19. We, we are already using it now, but we are going to uh, ex uh, expanding its utility in all projects and all, uh, all areas. And the second one is uh, there is a need for strengthening the global FFS uh, platform, uh, especially for uh, uh, you know, strengthening the greater cooperation in FFS innovations and networking. There's a dire need to share all the best in innovations and, and network everyone. And this, uh, in, uh, keeping in mind the, uh, our contribution from Pakistan that I already shared the EFFS ecosystem, so that will be uh, one thing, uh, and we also need support from the FFS Global Platform, your valued input in it, and uh, your guidance also. And uh, the second one is the, uh, you know, uh, these two innovative tools uh, we already tested in Pakistan, and now we, we wish that that need to be tested in other, other parts of the world as well. And platform can play a wide uh, role in it. Uh, as you know, the locust is uh, the you know prime issue here uh, in, in African countries and in Pakistan as well. So, using this uh, these learnings, we, we are going to develop this visual boards for locust as well, and especially for farmers those who are uh, uh, you know locust belongs it when it is uh, you know uh, breeding it breed it basically it's not a farming area it's a desert, desert area so there's a different type of community and when it is uh, developed and the swarm travel it goes to affect the uh, crop areas so there are two types of uh, communities one the farming community the non-farming community so we are developing these boards for both of them so that we should have a good learning process uh, and extension tool uh, for locust as well and also as i uh, shared with you uh, we are going to start a farmer's business and climate, uh, you know, farmer, uh, business climate field school here, here in Pakistan in our new uh, bigger project that is GCA funded. So here we have an opportunity to integrate the business school and climate field school, uh, climate and farmer field school curricula in one set. 
So that's why we have to develop a new tool for it as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any question, uh, I will be here to answer this. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, John, uh, for that exciting presentation. I love the colors where everyone is pointing at the color as a reference point. Of course, the, there are some few questions that you will help us to respond to. So now, uh, in the remaining few minutes that we have, we'd like to open the discussion to questions, but most importantly, the presenters, you have some specific questions that you the participants have, have raised. Um, I, I would like to call upon Sophie to, to specific questions, especially the issue of uh, will the course be open to all the field school fraternity or everybody? So Sophie, you may have to do that. I've also seen that the question on how many countries has been responded thanks to Susie, uh, Susan, you, 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 you manage that. But there is also, again, um, Sophie, a question of uh, how we monitor field schools. Uh, m and E, uh, I know you refer to, may, you may have to refer to the mail. Then um, we have our colleague Bahana on, online. Uh, so now before we call upon Sophie, we would like to give Bahana a very short time also uh, specifically to respond to some of the questions, but give very short experience from Kenya. So, Bahana, are you there? Daniel, from Kenya. Hello? Edwin, are you hearing? Are you helping him? Or is he already there? I, I think he's not here. Let me check. But uh, we can... Uh, I'll check and I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, okay. Check. Meanwhile, Sophie, EA, uh, then uh, the rest of the team, there are general questions, which are also very important for us to give a, for example, uh, in the field when you, for the, the vaccination of the animals are from house to house, how do we take precautions on this? So maybe Thomas in, from Malawi or uh, Cassia from um, Angola, if you would like to give us on how, what precautions are taken also from the animal side. We showed more of about the crop side, but also we'd like to hear more about how do we deal with the animal issues uh, when we are managing them. So, uh, so Susie, did you manage to get Bahana? I think he's not here. Okay. So no problem, that's fine. Um, then uh, Sophie, again, the issue of the language, Arabic is coming. We need a handbook also in Arabic. So you may okay. have this. Yeah, so go, go Sophie. Thank you, uh, Max, and great to see all the insights uh, coming from the countries. I should say that FAO Angola really inspired us because they were the first to put out the poster and campaign on COVID, and that's what started us doing this work with uh, many more countries and then has gone now viral and global. So, um, yes, the e-learning, if you allow me, maybe Max, to share my screen just for a second, um, uh, I'll, I'll show the e-learning course that is coming uh, from our site. It will, of course, be open to everyone. So here and you get a small preview um, of, of the course and what it will look like. Uh, it will be open to um, uh, uh, everyone. It will be, uh, in the next few months, it will be put in the FAO e-learning academy. So we will try to use the field schools approach uh, of e discovery learning as much as possible. So here you can see you are invited to see some pictures and then observe what, what do you see and make some conclusions about what field schools is. Um, and it will have many um, quizzes and videos and inbuilt questions and exercises and, and etc. 
Um, uh, the question on monitoring and, and um, uh, early warning, um, sorry, monitoring of field schools. So there's now a lot of um, different tools that are being used for the monitoring of field schools. Uh, we started a digitalization process of um, monitoring, we call it MEL, monitoring uh, evaluation and and learning uh, because it's more than m and &E. it's actually uh, m and &E is a tool for constant adaptive management and improvement of programs uh, um, and we are using now a, a number of countries uh, are use FL Malawi and projects in Senegal and Pakistan are, are using either apps or Kobo collect or ODK uh, as forms to uh, digitalize the, the, um, the field schools uh, M&E systems and CARE, our partners from CARE, Pernati, yourself has developed some, uh, some tools. So right now we don't have a global monitoring system for field schools because every project or intervention has their own objectives and indicators that they want to monitor. But we are developing forms that uh, can be put at the disposal of any project that wants, doesn't want to start from zero. And we are um, developing also a monitoring and early um, and um, monitoring evaluation and learning uh, guidebook, uh, which my colleague Susan is the lead on, uh, on our side to, um, uh, with our colleagues from the East Africa F F uh, FAO office uh, on how to uh, set up an ME system for field schools. I've seen many questions also on nutrition in the chat. Do we have guidance on FFS and nutrition? Yes, we are happy to share more material after this call, after this webinar on the discussion group, the FFSD group, which has uh, over 127 countries participating now. If you're not a member of that group and you're interested, is Susan and Zoe have put the address, the Pharma Field School address, email address, where you can register for that. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank, thank you very much, Sophie. There are, of course, a number of questions uh, which we could address, uh, but uh, let me run quickly to, uh, um, to more to Silise and, um, and uh, Thomas. Uh, Daniel is here, if you'd like to introduce oh. him. Oh, Daniel is now here. Very good. Well, we welcome Daniel briefly. Daniel is a a field school master trainer from Kenya, and I uh, would like to request you to basically, if you've been watching the questions also, some few, not all of them now, the experience of a master trainer in, 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 in operating now during the time of COVID. What is your, your brief perspective on this? So please, Daniel, if you go on for that, then we give you some specific questions, please. Uh, thank you very much, Max, and everybody, everybody for having me on board. Uh, first of all, uh, a quick snapshot on the Kenyan experience. Uh, we have had a FFS approach being used by quite a number of programs in the country uh, up to the date when COVID set in. So we had to really stop most of the programs. Uh, talking as an independent consultant, uh, as a master trainer. But uh, now we have started opening up, of course, uh, strictly following uh, the Ministry of Health guidelines, as well as the FAO guidelines which we receive. As I speak to you right now, I'm in, in the middle of a training of a master, uh, training of facilitators program under the Aquaculture Business Development Program. And what uh, we have done is, to the best of um, our abilities, to follow strictly the guidelines. Our participants are uh, 15 in numbers. And uh, yesterday, we went into the use of uh, webinar training, which we were kind of pre-testing so that we can be able to see how effective it is. And uh, I can tell you, most of the, train, uh, the trainers were really excited on that and uh, they have even requested for another session on the same, which means it is workable. However, the was that uh, we, we had uh, the trainees in a class, so the next big thing is to think of uh, what if they went back to their stations, how effective is it going to be? Uh, but uh, having said that also, 
I think the other thing that we need to think uh, about critically as a global platform is really on um, integrating COVID-19 issues within the FFS approach in terms of um, uh, reflecting on the key principles of pharma field schools, especially on the aspect of experiential learning. Uh, key topics such as what is COVID, uh, how is COVID spread, uh, how, what can you be able to do to manage uh, a patient in the situation when we have uh, community-based uh, instances. And then the other challenge which uh, we need to start thinking about is building the capacity of field schools stroke communities in, in building up um, uh, what I call a community action plan so that they can be able to uh, work closely with what the national government is doing so that we reduce the local transmission which has now been the major uh, contributor to the spread of COVID-19 in most of the countries. Back to you, Max. Uh, would you tell us briefly about, do you have any ex experience in the kind of vaccination of the animals during this period if you have to move from house to house? What, what precautions do you take? And also, uh, the other important question is about how do we bring on young people to the field school and also make them uh, and get stories of success from them, the issues of the young people and the vaccination of animals. Could you respond to that briefly? Thank you, thank, thank you Max. Thank you, Max. Um, the, the issue of um, young people in field schools amid uh, COVID-19, uh, looking at the, 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 the infection amongst the communities, we are aware that the most vulnerable, that those who are at risk are the elderly, and therefore that automatically gives the young men and women in our field schools a better chance to be able to take more part in the farming activities. Uh, we are envisaging a situation where the use of ICTs, mostly by the young men and women who are uh, ICT savvy, is becoming more handy, especially in one, marketing uh, of produce through WhatsApp, through ICT platforms. Um, then, then the other thing is uh, community sensitization teams as now envisaged by, by, by the FFS fraternity, mostly the young men can come in because they are much more versatile. They can easily move from one place to the other. They can be able to share these messages to the, the, their peers amongst the, the communities, either within the field schools or even outside. On the aspects of uh, vaccinations, um, I may say that uh, we haven't had a lot of uh, movement now in terms of uh, the livestock sector, given the fact that uh, we have had uh, quite a number of um, restrictions in the country. But now that we are opening up, the advice that we are giving all programs is that um, we need to limit the number of people who go out to do uh, the essential services. Uh, we are advising that uh, the, the, the cattle, most cattle are owned by the elderly, yes, but uh, the elderly have to keep off these, these um, critical areas. And they, if they have to be there, then they have to really be in smaller okay. numbers so that okay. we don't have a, an issue of uh, okay. high risk. Okay, thank you, Daniel. And uh, yes. now I would like to call upon the, the presenters just to one minute parting thoughts. Any question that you would like to address, we're not going to address all the questions for now. So I would like to start with the, Thomas. Any parting thoughts? Thomas? 
Okay, thank yeah. you. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting my my mic. Yeah, thank you very much, Max. And I, I think Daniel already responded on the question of uh, vaccination. I will not want to repeat. But uh, quite a number of uh, questions under the Q and A. Also, we have been trying to respond back to them. Uh, yeah. yeah, just through the text, so the the, the participant uh, could actually read through them. But basically, very quickly, like uh, we already alluded on, it is very important that yes, we adhere to the national guidelines in each of the country because there there could be no more guidelines, but the situation is unfolding differently in many countries, and it's also affecting perhaps uh, the countries also a little bit differently, the local, so given the local, the, lo the local context. So it's very important that we understand the local context, look at what mechanism you think uh, it works for you. But the key message that I want to give to the participant is that COVID has not uh, separated farmers from their field because there's no risk between a farmer going to their field. What is becoming a challenge is for us to support them. So we need to continue to explore all the possible options that can enable us to encourage farmers to access the information, to access the markets, to access the, the inputs that they would need because food security, if we do not attend, the food security is going to be a major problem. And the Farmer Field School, I think, give us a very good platform for which we can continue to reach out on our farmers and also provide the necessary support using whatever mechanism that you have. So I call upon all the farm fiscal practitioners out there to explore all the possible ways, think outside the box, look at what works, share what your ideas are on the platform, and then colleagues can be able to, you know, give some submission on advice on how this can work out. So thank you very much, Max, and then uh, I will then stop there, give my other colleagues an opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thomas, and thank you. We continue to support the farmers. That is a key message. If not, we shall have no granaries. Even the stomachs will be flat. So thank you, my senior brother. We, may I call upon now uh, Kathia? Uh, Kathia to, to give us her parting remarks. Very good. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Max. No, I, I only want to, to say that it was very rewarding to have our, our campaign and our information to be shared all over the world. And uh, I look forward to, to have another experience like that and to learn from other colleagues in other countries. I think that that makes us stronger and and at the end, it uh, will help our our farmers to to be prepared and 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 also to empower them and to to tell them how how important they are for us for supplying us food and in this in this in these times. So thanks for the opportunity, and I I look forward to to learn more from all of you. Okay, thank you. So, um, very good. Thank you for, for also being a champion of the materials that we saw earlier, the poster. So, we appreciate that so much. Um, may I call Jam? And Jam, when you come on board, please try to address the issue of uh, is the EFFS only for Pakistan or it's also for other regions? So, the ICT, the, the field school, Jam? Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, the EFFS initially we designed for Pakistan and one project, and uh, but uh, we can replicate it uh, for upon request if somebody is interested to use it. So we can give we can give it's uh, you know the replicated model because it is uh, the, the first model which is ODK based. Now what we are going to develop that is uh, the EFFS ecosystem, it will be for everyone, even uh, anyone in, in any country, they will be having able to have its, uh, uh, you know, login and uh, the uh, password, and then they will manage their projects and they will manage their activities independently without uh, sharing with others. So that is what we are uh, developing uh, now. But the, the, the model we already have 
we can give if somebody is interested we can give them this uh, idea okay thank thank you very much uh, our uh, i call them our creators of the field school that is where we started things the innovation so uh, may I call upon um, Susie, do, do you have any announcements that you would like to make before I give a, the floor to Sophie? If you don't have... Hi. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, I didn't expect it. Onward. Uh, it was a really lovely um, presentation and thank you so much for all the information that you shared. Um, I actually don't have much to add. I sent a lot of responses through the Q&A um, and I think it was a great exchange and uh, just that I think it's um, important to keep the right balance between all the digital tools and the other tools that um, are used in pharma field schools. And then um, I just look forward to hearing more about what people are doing in the field uh, through the D group. And uh, have a lovely day. Bye bye. Thank you, Susie. Uh, ba, uh, ba, Daniel, do you have one word to to greet to send to the participants? One sure, word. sure. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will urge. That, uh, and request that let's have more of this so that we can be able to really assist the, the farming fraternity in our respective places. I will call upon all out there in the uh, in the Kenyan situation who will wish uh, amid COVID-19. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much, and I wish to first ex extend the apologies from the moderation team that we were not able to speak in, in French, but uh, <clears throat> we are going to have a discussion and say we, we shall have a French, uh, a French moderated uh, platform. I know the interpretation is going on, but we shall uh, discuss internally with a global platform to see if, if we can have French uh, P1. But with this now, from my side, I thank everybody. And I would like to call upon Sophie to give her a closing uh, thoughts. And we close the webinar. Thank you, Max. Thank you to all of you for all the insights and, and uh, innovations you shared in this webinar. Thanks to all the field teams and AFAS and the UN Decade of Family Farming East African Field School Hub. Uh, who partnered with us for this webinar. Uh, the Global FFS platform is here to serve the FFS community. Uh, please join the D group. Uh, you will find all the references in the, in the chat and Q&A. If you, the FFS D group, if you want to have uh, follow-up information and the PowerPoints and the recording of this uh, webinar. Um, and we'll keep posting there also the new languages that come up with this material and new material that will come. We're happy to share all of this in the InDesign files so your designers can modify, translate, etc. Um, very glad to have been with you today and I wish you a wonderful rest of the day and good luck for the um, agricultural and field activities. All the best.